Even the most primitive form of life on Earth, the bacteria, need water for their survival, and there are no exceptions. And this seemingly fundamental link between water and life is driving the search for life out there in the solar system. Because wherever we find water, that will be the best place to look for life beyond the Earth. The Earth is the only planet that currently has liquid water on its surface. The other planets are either too close to the Sun, like Mercury, and baked dry, or they're too far away. Saturn's rings are made of water, but in the depths of space, it's frozen into lumps of solid ice. But that doesn't mean that liquid water has never existed elsewhere in the solar system. And if it has, we should be able to find the evidence. Because wherever water goes, it leaves its footprints. These are the Scablands, a remote part of the northwestern United States. It's one of the most spectacular places to come to see how water carves its signature into the landscape. The largest flood on Earth went through this area here. Uh, Jim Rice is an astrogeologist. He believes that understanding the events that created this landscape can help in the search for water on other planets. We're kind of like a CSI arriving at the scene of a crime after it's already happened. This is the evidence left here, kind of piece it together. I can see this is not a, a normal river no. system. You, you can just see, because it's so straight. You know, it, there's no meandering of a river here. It's just a big hole. This entire landscape was created at the end of the last ice age. 200 miles to the east lay a huge lake held in place by a wall of glacial ice. When that wall ruptured, over 2,000 cubic kilometers of water swept out in a single catastrophic event. The flood waters were at least 400 feet deep here, but actually they were another 200 feet stacked on top of that coming across here. So, so we, I, we would be under 200 feet of water standing right here. So, so am I to imagine a, wa a wave? Yeah, a massive wave, roiling, rumbling. This water would be charged with big chunks of ice from the ice dam. It would be loaded with big chunks of basalt, bedrock being gouged and ripped out of here. It'd be an impressive sight. Flood waters tore across the landscape. They carved out this 20 mile long canyon. And at its head, it left these giant horseshoes. At over 400 feet high and five miles across, this was the largest waterfall the world has ever known. The easiest way to think about it is if you took every river in the world, put them in the same location, had them flowing at the same time, these floods are 10 times larger than that. And how long did, do we think it took to sculpt this landscape? Uh, 48 hours to a week. It's instantaneous geologically. The Scablands reveal the characteristic signature that water carves into the landscape. It's a signature that can be seen from space, and not just on the Earth. When we turn our telescopes on our next door neighbour and prime candidate for finding alien life, the planet Mars, we find almost identical features cut into its surface.
the red planet is covered in outflow channels. Straight, wide canyons, exactly like the Scablands. And they're filled with identical geological features. It all suggests that similar huge floods once tore across the surface of Mars. This is a picture of here from the air. I'm sat somewhere around here. And here are the, the horseshoe shapes of the dry falls, which are just over there. This is a picture taken of the surface of Mars. And you see those typical horseshoe shapes of the falls. Also, you see these structures upstream of the falls, these, these grooves cut into the landscape. And you see that here, grooves cut into the landscape as the water cascades down and then flows over the falls and cuts the gigantic valleys out as it moves downstream. So all this adds up, I think, to an overwhelming smoking gun that there were vast amounts of water that flowed very quickly over the surface of Mars at some point in the past. <laughs>